Among entertainment mediums, music is easily the most personal. For both the listener and the artist, a song can evoke certain memories and emotions. Part of the appeal is that they're able to channel their energy, their tenderness, can be my fully over. Stop, no. their frustration, Look at all these slave masters posing on your dollar. Get it? Their dorkiness. And certain artists and genres pride themselves on the reputation of honesty and vulnerability, which is why revelations of ghostwriters or depictions of the music industry pumping songs out like factory work can make the product seem vapid and hollow. It takes a special singer and songwriter to not only relate to you lyrically, but also paint a vivid picture emotionally. And no one has done that for me quite like Nate Roos. His body of work conveys the rawest of feelings, most prominently in his time as the lead singer of Fun, with bandmates Jack Antonoff and Andrew Dost, expressing his specific emotions and anxieties in a way that can resonate with almost anyone. Feelings of futility and internal conflict have been present in Nate's work since his musical career began. Bruce formed the format with his childhood friend Sam Means back in 2002. Their first single, the first single, off their EP, EP, is a prototype of a sort of existential angst and frustration that would highlight the rest of Bruce's career. The sensation is backed up by the lyrics, as well as the instrumentation and production, clapping, overlaid vocals, harsh snare, depict the chaos, Nate's disillusionment, dissatisfaction with his place in life, despondence at the end result of his efforts, how only grew in his music as time went by. Fun's first album, Aim and Ignite, was released in 2009, about a year and a half after the band first formed. Here we see a brighter, bombastic side to Nate's work. The upper register of Roos's tenor voice gives songs like I Wanna Be The One, Light a Roman Candle With Me, so we aim at ignite, so The Gambler, and the first song I ever stuck on repeat, All the pretty girls on a Saturday night, so I call. Color Warmth, Comfort, Trust, and Optimism. In fact, love is the eighth most frequent non-filler word across all of Aim and Ignite's lyrics. It appears 31 times in four songs, but only 13 times in five songs on their more acclaimed sophomore album, Some Nights. This reflects the band's shift in writing. For as honest and upbeat as the first album comes across, they didn't think that Aim and Ignite was a particular style that was true to them. To get really specific, I think Some Nights is more indicative of who we are than, than anything in the past. Though there were hints of what was to come in their next album. Despite Aim and Ignite sounding generally upbeat, the opener Be Calm is an isn't but. It begins as a theatrical narrative. Orchestral instrumentation picks up the tempo to mirror the narrator's growing panic until the chorus, but there's no resolution to be found in this song. Instead, the song ends without a rumbling low brass note, some dissonant strings, and a foreboding chord, casting the storyteller's fervent declaration of resolve as just a farce. And my personal favorite of Reese's work is Take Your Time Coming Home. It's eight minutes of energy, reflection, and catharsis. It also contains one of his staples, referencing and refuting lines from his previous projects. The album that made them a household name, Some Nights, is loaded with fantastic tracks as well. All All Right gives a more intimate look at Nate's inner thoughts, a monologue on accepting his wasted efforts in order to ease the pain as he moves forward. Carry On and We Are Young carry on that same sentiment, and though the latter is a song from the album with the biggest legacy, the title track is a true emotional core. Nate Roos recalls his efforts with the format, some nights having been released 10 years after he started making music professionally. He reflects on what he's given up in order to chase his ambitions. In an effort to chase what he wants, he left behind his home, his family, and a sense of belonging. And in the end, what does he truly have to show for it? Two years after releasing their second album, the format went on hiatus. Two years after claiming two Grammy wins out of six possible nominations, Fun went on hiatus. 
One was well-known locally, but they became an international sensation. But in the end, they met the same fate. Nate Roos' solo album, Grand Romantic, feels like a hangover from the success and acclaim. But thematically, it carries on his same worries and anxieties. Harsh Lights is once again about moving on from the hurt of the past, Great Big Storm is an orchestral anthem to weathering turbulent times, and <laughs> exercises the doubts and opportunity costs of his life's journey. Writing about what you know comes at the risk of sounding stale, and Nate's beginnings, his peak, and his come down as a professional have all been characterized by the same exact doubts and feelings of existential dread, though never quite crossing into hopeless depression. Rather than lack of growth on Nate's part, this is perhaps the most telling and relatable aspect of what he's done over the years. We may feel like we've improved as people, but in a moment of crisis, we can fall back on bad habits. Sometimes when we reach our high points, success creates an emptiness, it leaves behind a vacuum, the need for a new goal, and a sense of purpose. It can also leave behind more questions and answers. If you've always tried just as hard and always done the right thing, why did you achieve success later and not sooner? Grammy award-winning Nate Roos is still just a boy from the desert trying to find his voice. I see his work since fun as a trilogy. Aim and Ignite presents itself as a bright and carefree work, but with hints of the trouble underneath. Some Nights is the emotion of facing that trouble, and Grand Romantic is the aftermath of coming to terms with your shortcomings and attempting to move on. Nate Roos has found and lost his way in life and in music plenty of times. And in an era where we have plenty of time to suffocate in our own failures, regrets, and the general weight of the world crashing down upon us, his music can help us find our way through as well. Music is one of the best ways we form parasocial relationships. When no one else is around, we can let an artist tell us their story. They become vulnerable to everyone who listens, we become vulnerable to their influence while they don't even know we exist, and we become vulnerable once again when we share their music with friends or total strangers. Music can amplify our mood or change it. And Nate Roos' work hits hardest for those who are feeling particularly human. After Fun's hiatus, Nate Roos continues to write and produce. Andrew Doss writes music for dogs, and Jack Antonoff also continues to write and produce for others, in addition to his solo project Bleachers, who went on to make the best 80s song ever in 2017. The end of their journey together made me reflect on their music, and how it helped me deal with my own insecurities and anxieties. To me, it wasn't just a rock and roll band, and because of their work, I'm still standing.